Welcome back to Be The Change Podcast with me, Stephanie Howlett, CEO of Diversity NL. Have a listen as we explore real life, vulnerable topics on diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Become awakened, create culture of inclusion, be brave, have impact by being an ally. Explore how you can be the change that you always wanted to be. We respectfully acknowledge the territory in which we gather as the ancestral homelands of the Beothic and the island of Uktamaguk as the ancestral homelands of the Mi'kmaq and Beothic. We'd like to recognize the Inuit of Nunatsiavut and Nunatukavut and the Innu of Natasanan and their ancestors as the original people of Labrador. We open our hearts and minds as we strive for respectful relationships with all First Peoples of this province. We search for collective healing and true reconciliation as we honor this beautiful land together and commit ourselves to being stewards who will respect the cultures, traditions, and ceremonies of all who call it home. Welcome back to Be The Change podcast. We have a very, very serious and special guest today. We have Chris Ford with us. So Chris is the general manager of Harvey's Oil and Harvey's Home Heating. He also has a very impressive resume when it comes to building positive innovation, leadership, fostering longstanding relationships with different organizations. Uh, Chris is also a champion of the queer community. Um, and he spearheads a lot of different events and activities from everything from drag bingos to St. John's annual Pride on the Pier, which is absolutely fantastic with drag queens and all the proceeds, of course, go to my one of my favorite organizations, Quadrangle NL. So welcome to the show. Welcome to the podcast, Chris. I'm delighted to have you. Thank you, Stephanie. And don't let the tie fool you. I got my speedo on down uh, down below. I so, know. Uh, I know you do. Uh, I know. I do so like I a bit of fun from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> But great to Absolutely. be here. Thank you. Thank you for having me on your podcast. I'm really delighted. Absolutely. So I want to talk, I guess, about a little bit about business and a little bit about, I guess, the, the community that we're part of, the US LGBTQ plus community. So let's talk a little bit of business first. So um, so that folks get a bit of understanding your perspective, where you come from. So let's talk a little bit about your educational background and what that looks like. Sure. Um, well, you know what? I guess uh, in terms of business and education, that I, I, I grew up in a small business family. My dad operated a, a small heating business since 1955. So I guess my education started, you know, as as uh, as young as I was able to read and hear, uh, you know, learning about business and learning about how to treat people and customers and people in the community and what you do to to build a great team and that. Um, so very proud of uh, my father and that what have accomplished in that over the 53 years he was in business and that. Of course, uh, like a lot of Newfoundlanders, there was no other choice. You just head to Memorial and uh, throw <laughs> caution to the wind and figure out something of what you're going to do. And I ended up at the at the business school after if there was any other choice in that. And I graduated in 2006 with uh, the Bachelor of Business Administration. That's so very thankful for my time there, and I'm very proud of a lot of the a lot of the outcomes that's after coming out of the business school that month. Yeah, absolutely. There's been a lot of success stories and leadership yeah. stories, that's for sure. 100%. A lot of innovations have happened. Yeah. 100%. So business. So was Harvey's your first uh, big job that you landed or were you in other No, well, you know what? Like I, I credit a lot of my, my mother was personnel manager at Woolco back in the 60s and 70s. And she always said, you know, if you if you want uh, if you want someone good on your payroll, you know, if they have McDonald's on their on their um <laughs> On their resume, that is uh, that's a great uh, great learning opportunity for young people to learn about business and discipline and okay the whole the whole working environment and that. So my first job was actually at McDonald's. I used to get off the bus after school with my uniform and uh, go in and make uh, delicious hamburgers and that. Um, of course, you know all throughout university I had jobs outside of the family business and. Um, you know, when I graduated in 2006, you know, went to work in the in the family business. And, uh, you know, there was a couple of outside factors on that. But we said it was a good exit strategy in 2008 for my father to sell the business and, and walk away and take his check and go away and enjoy, uh, enjoy environment. Right. I mean, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy his retirement. And I guess with a small business, you know, you, you got to run it with this, not always with this. And, um, you know, it worked out well for him. And uh, I, along with the uh, all the other staff at Forwards Oil, 
we, um, you know, we went along with the deal and I held various positions with, uh, with Harvey's uh, from 2008. And then in 2014, I was, I was lucky enough to be, uh, to be appointed the general manager. And that's where I've hung my hat ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and, and I talk about luck because, you know, is it truly luck when it comes to positions and things that we get. I don't think most things are handed to people. It's and it's not luck. We, we know it's hard work. It's a whole lot of buckling down, endless hours, and a whole lot of grit when it comes yeah. to these. What do you think? And you know what? There was a lot of times before I was in the GM position that because you know when I wasn't GM, I wasn't out at work, and uh, this is predominantly a, a male-dominated industry. It's it's an industry that's in its twilight phase. Um, you know, since that time, we've done a lot of transitioning our, our, our workforce in that, uh, and you know, into various demographics. But back in those days, I mean, I was the youngest person on the staff team, and I was a closeted homosexual. So there were many days I thought I would just walk out through the door and say, shag this, I don't need it. And, um, you know, I'm sure we'll talk about it in more detail in that Um you know, um, but, you know, you just stick around and persevere, you know, like a true Newfoundlander and nothing ever comes easy. And and the job came up and it was an open competition, um, you know, and a few people applied both inside and outside the organization and that. But I was lucky enough to uh, to uh, receive the nod. Yeah. So yeah. tell us about. I guess some of the fantastic things you're do- doing there at Harvey's, like I see some of the trucks or the truck or whatever it is, the fleet that have the pride yeah. flag, the the progress flag wrapped in it, which yeah. is truly impressive to me. Um, we don't see that a whole lot in uh, some of the big industries and some of the big companies. Right. Um, you know, you know, Harvey's oil is half owned by Suncorp and, uh, you know, safety is our, is our number one top priority, um, both to our employees or customers and the environment. And we always say like the number one cause of accidents and incidents is absent-mindedness. And I know from myself, from my own lived experience and that working in this industry, and I mean, I'm, I'm in an office, right? I'm not operating any heavy equipment. You know, when you can't bring your true self to work, um, you know, things, you know, your mind is racing. Um, you know, your mind is not on task. So for us, I mean, doing the truck, doing the events, um, you know, if there are anybody, um, you know, in our organization or in our industry, it's just a vote of confidence that it's okay to be your true self, you know, and you're welcome here. Because there was a lot of times, uh, you know, before I was in management, I felt like I wasn't welcome. And, you know, I wasn't my most productive because, you know, I mean, all these thoughts and these conversations and 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 overanalyzing every aspect of your day. Um, that consumes your time when you should be working and 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 doing a good job and going above and beyond and excelling in that, right? So, um, you know, that's one small piece of what we do. And I mean, we have 7,000 customers still in, you know, the, the greater St. John's area and we go into people's homes. And when you think of someone's home, I mean, that's the most sacred part of someone's, of someone's being. So, I mean, when we... Um, you know, we don't want our customers to ever feel that they need to, you know, okay, hide that pride flag that's in your background. You know, I can't have a Harvey's technician coming in here and seeing that, you know, what what, what might they say, you know, or, what, you know, so we, you know, we just love to go over and beyond. And it's not just, you know, queer related issues. I mean, if someone's having any money, uh, you know, money issues, any type of relationship issues, if your dog or cat dies, whatever, I mean, we have a, a no shame policy that, you know, if your head's not in the game for whatever reason, uh, there's no um, there's no uh, ramification. If you bring that up and say, look, I'm not I'm not safe to be operating today because we don't want any accidents or incidents on for our team. Absolutely. So really having an environment that's safe for, I guess, everyone um, that's inclusive, that people right. can feel free to bring up what's going on in their lives, right. being their authentic selves, that right. whole concept. Right. And I yeah. think, too, I mean, like, you know, when we when we planned the the Pride on the Pier event this year, I mean, we did it. Uh, we did it not last year, the year before. And we, you know, there was no issue with it. But this year, I mean, we had to develop a comms plan. 
for the chance that there might be protesters. And I thought, really, like, I mean, this makes absolutely no sense. We're having a barbecue on a deck, right? It's family friendly. Everybody's welcome. But yet we had to develop this whole comms plan just for the sake or chance that, um, you know, these protesters might show up. And, you know, the whole Bud Light fiasco and that, I think now more than ever, organizations need to step up and need to be that voice and need to make a deliberate effort because right off the bat, when people see that noise around Bud Light, you know, we don't want to be an organization that retracts and retreats, right? We need to be there for the community, not just the queer community, every, every community. Absolutely. So really sending messaging, right? It sends messaging. Yeah. Yeah. Deliberate. Deliberate. More deliberate. Yeah. Yeah. 100% 100% intention, yeah. deliberate uh, when it comes to all those things, because obviously yeah. you're in the business of making money, but how, I, you know, however, it's, it is family, right? Like people become family, right? You know, right. taking pride in who's working for you and knowing about them, getting to know about them and their families. Right, right. You know, someone did flip me and I, did, I brought this up at one of the events of the summer. Someone did flip me the I guess the, you know, the market analysis of what did happen to Bud Light. And I mean, you know, you're thinking about it and say, you know, and with pride on the pier, I mean, we make a sizable donation to that organization and say, okay, well, we want to be a strong organization to be able to continue to, to be able to continue to fund these groups and show them support. Um, So, you know, we need, we need to have the sales there to be able to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But you don't want to you don't want to turn your back on on the community and not be a vocal um you know a vocal participant and an ally um you know for the community so i guess you know nobody showed up it was great i mean we were we were over cautious and that we had everything prepared but i think uh i think those protesters knew not to mess with harvey's oil <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, hate comes from somewhere. And I'm always curious, um, being a social work background, where it comes from. So sometimes it comes from fear, yeah. uh, discomfort, not knowing. You know, there's a whole bunch of different things. And so a lot of times when, when there's haters, I, I try to enter the headspace of what's their perspective and where is it coming from? And and right. for honestly, that drives me as, a, as an entrepreneur, or as a business person. Mm-hmm. Um, to do better and to do more and have more right. uncomfortable conversations with people, right. right? So, you know, provide the love to them, right? right. Like, they're not going to expect that, right? I, I think they're rational. Love, providing yeah. the love, Chris. Yeah, the, the rationale behind it, I mean, this whole concept of grooming, I mean, when we sat down with M5, I said, like, if there was such thing as grooming, I mean, I would be a Gander River fishing god. I mean, I grew up around outboard motors, oil trucks, <laughs> fishing <laughs> da like i mean I, I and then yeah but yet i'm gay right i i am a gay right i'm a gay town right yeah. you know yeah. i have a credit card and a phone book in my toolbox right i can't do anything but yet i grew up around it and my dad could put an arse in a tin cat but i am who i am and that's the way i was born so if yeah. anyone if anyone thinks that by a child watching a drag queen perform when you know the Dallas Cowboys are done up just cheerleaders are done up just the same. I mean, there, there's more to your point. There's more going on inside their heads of why they perceive that as as some sort of hate motivated action, right? Well, a hundred percent. A lot of this is literally spreading rumors that are false. So yeah. we know that there's more um, there's more hate crimes and there's more crimes in general done by cisgendered. Um, straight people than what there are parts of the queer community. There's very right. little crime done by parts of the community that right. drag queens or, you know, anyone. Um, so it's it's unfortunately a lot of hate mongering and fear mongering amongst people trying to, I think, kind of politicize their efforts, um, which which is, you know, like, let's embrace that and show them a whole lot of love. Yes, right? 100%. And I think that's what the community has done for years, right? You know? Yeah. And um and I think people are nervous of what they don't know. Um, but I mean, I can only I can only speak from my own work environment here and and, and being in an in industry, um, specifically that with 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 Petro Canada and that, I mean, you know, it's it's completely uh completely transformed our office for the better. Absolutely. So 
what you know you you became the general manager so obviously there was intention there was shifting of cultures because cultures have to shift when we talk about these things and, and people need to get uncomfortable with some of those conversations how do you think some of that started how do you think some of that it is you are a warrior too today with with that workplace culture well you know what when i got the job i still wasn't out and it was only at the time and for whatever reason i had been out to my family my friends um, the owner of the business, which is probably around a hundred yards down the street. Um, but for whatever reason, and again, it's all up here. Um, you know, I couldn't come out to my team or my management team that reported into me for whatever reason. I don't know if I thought that they would, you know, disrespect me or, you know, they'd be talking about me behind my back. Um, you know, I have a union in that reporting to me. So, I mean, that, that, that whole dynamic is a little bit unique and mm -hmm. how that would play out. Um, and it wasn't until the Pulse nightclub shooting, I think back in 2015, um, that's when I decided, I was like, you know what, like enough is enough. Like I cannot, I cannot keep going to events and saying, oh no, I'm going to single and you know, oh Chris, how come you don't have a girl? Like, I mean, it was just crazy. Just, and you know, and, I told my team, and they also we all knew, <laughs> we all knew, but they were frightened to death. To, they said we were equally as nervous to bring it up to you because we didn't want to upset you, mm. right? So I mean, a lot of times, just getting stuff up and out and out in the open and just let it land, as long as it's coming from a place of love, that's your foundation, right? And I remember I, my hand was shaking, and and my assistant controller Trudy and that she. You know, I couldn't stop my handshake and she was sat next to me and she put her hand on top of mine and she said, Chris, stop. We love you. We love you. And then I think once that happened, I mean, there was this, there was this, this, this magical shift, um, you know, this magical shift in our office. Right. I mean, in recent years, we, we developed a customer service standard. Um, you know, I mean, I have two employees now that are getting awards for 40 year service um, this weekend. Um, so, you know, they know about customer service, but they might not be brushed up on, you know, the changing customer dynamic or, you know, the customers that we serve. Um, so everybody at Harvey's, they go through a very, uh, extensive customer service program that was developed by Deborah Wells Smith Advanced PD. And, um, you know, they, they, they basically, they know the rules of the road, but they also get these, these thank you cards when they, when they notice that somebody is exemplifying you know, our values and what we stand for and how we treat our customers and how we interact with our with our with our coworkers. So they're able to reward as well. So it's not just perceived as a as a penalty type of system and say, well, these are the things you need to follow. There's the counteractive of, okay, well, this is what you did great. Here's a little thank you card. And there's prizes and that associated with. It. So very proud of that. But I mean it's something you got to work on. Something you got to work on every day. And um you know, we have a lady here in, in sales and that she's a single mom. And, uh, you know, we're just standing up one morning having coffee. And she said, you know, Chris, she said, I'm going to give up on the men now. So I think I'm going to start dating women. And I, I said, well, good for you. Right. Whatever you want. And I thought to myself, wow, I was like, here, she's a frontline employee. And, uh, you know, here, you know, she doesn't even report to me. And, and, and she's comfortable enough to say that, you know, I'm going to go start, you know, I'm going to go like, okay, am I having coffee today? Or am I having a cup of tea? Right. It was that casual. And the fact that she can do that. And I said, wow, I, I, I wish I felt that comfortable mm. you know, in 2006, 2008, to be able to have that conversation with the, with the head of the organization and that. So when, when you see that, um, you know, anecdotally, I mean, you know, that you built that open safe space, right. Absolutely. If people can bring up topics like that as if they're choosing a yes. bag of chips, right? Like it's, it was that cash. Yeah. It was so weird. Yeah. So yeah. weird. Right? Yeah. It was, it was not weird. Way, I mean, it was very humbling. I must say it was humbling. Yeah. 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 By the way, it was a very touching story. You almost brought a tear to my eye, which would have been the first time on the podcast, by the oh, way. Oh, there you go. Um, t <laughs> telling your story. But like the hearing the pride stories always strike yeah. a nerve with me because yeah you know when we have to wait or feel that we have to wait to come out it's you know it's a difficult one i mean right. because it's it's our lives like we're hiding pieces of ourselves and right. pretending to be people who we aren't and a lot of people cover um, a whole bunch of different things that are going on in their lives 
It could be different abuses. It could be um, addictions, mental health, and all those sorts of things. So right. as organizations, normalizing some of what's going on in people's lives. Yeah. And I think too, Stephanie, I mean, everybody got the work, the respectful workplace policy. I mean, it's hung up down in the kitchen, right? The anti-harassment policy, right? All that stuff. But unless it's lived and practiced in that every day, um, it, it's, it's, it's worth as much as the paper it's written on, right? I mean, if if the conversations are still taking place in the back room or the lunch room and that, I mean, the policy is not um, is not effective in that, right? So, I mean, I think creating that environment where it's it's deliberate, deliberate every day, um, that's uh, that's when you see true change in a workplace. So, intentionality, basically embedding it into the DNA of the organization, 100%. so that conversations can happen. Hundred percent, and I mean, not just with the you know with with uh, you know with or, I mean, not just with Pride Week or month and that. Um, you know, I, I I mentioned before about you know one of our distributors, Doug Penny, who uh, who passed away recently in that, and you know I asked him if he wanted to put that wrap on his truck. Now all of our brokers they own their own vehicles, and we wanted to put his truck in the Pride Parade. But you know I'm you know I wanted to ask him. It's his property, right? He's a contractor for us, and uh, I said you know Doug we want to we want to wrap your truck for for the Pride Parade. And he said, oh, yeah, he said, no problem. I mean, I didn't have the words out of my mouth. And he said, you know, put the put it on, put it on. He said, the brother Alec, he said, he got a young fella that's that way. Now, the terminology wasn't right, but <laughs> you let, you know, like you, 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 you know, I was grateful for what he want or what he what he agreed to do. Right. And I mean, him and his wife, they they brought their Pomeranian and they they threw candy out of the truck during that first pride parade that we walked in. And, uh, you know, he I mean, he even said, I mean, he was that progressive um because everyone always says you know june 30th you burn all the pride flags it all comes down mm. and forget about it for another year he was insistent yeah. on leaving that leaving that on his truck um throughout the year right so that really really impressed me that that he that 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 man i mean a white 62 year old straight man would uh, insist on keeping that on his truck all year round right Moving. And it's still on the truck because I still see it. It is, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, it's great. It's great, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. So, what do you think, being in oil and gas, what do you think organizations can do that potentially they're not doing to be more intentional? I think you know we always well we got an uh, expression in Newfoundland: the boats on the shore. I mean, and, and and from my involvement with Pride at work, I mean the Bay Street corridor, the boats on the shore, right? At Harvey's Oil. Our office here, boats on the shore. I think in in any um, you know industry that has you know um, a, a a variety or a diverse, I say diverse working environment. Like okay, whether it's an offshore rig, uh, a, a mine pit, right? Um, I think that you know I think organizations and industries need to do more outside of we'll say the white collar office, right? Um, you know, queer community makes up 12% of the population. I mean, we are in a labor, sh labor shortage in a lot of industries and that. So why wouldn't you want, if you are looking for people in a mine or people for a rig or, or any of these jobs, um, you know, there's great qualified people to work them. And the more you can make all workplaces inclusive, not just your corporate head office, um, the better it is for the businesses. If you want to look at it just from a granular business perspective, numbers purposes, um, but I mean, anybody that is working in these sites, I mean, they're highly sense, uh, safety sensitive um, and creating and replicating that environment that you have in, in uh, you know, in your office out on these remote work sites. And that I mean, I think that's that's the next uh, that's the next thing we need to conquer. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm going to look to you because you're going to be one of our leaders in that realm. Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. No, but it, but it is. It's it's you know it has to start with different generations and people in leadership positions right. that are allies or parts of the community or that have. Um, I think I think the wording is skin in the game. Right. Um, you know to be able to push ahead um, historically through the community. So women, Indigenous, to us LGBTQ persons with disabilities, racialized communities. So being able to say like we're in a labor skills uh, market 
and people are leaving organizations. So why aren't we going to these communities to say, we have jobs, we want you to come right. um, create that psychological safety because a lot of it is culture and psychological safety. Right. And I think not like, I mean, no, nobody from the queer community, we don't want any special treatment. We just want to come in, do our job, maybe have a few mm-hmm. laughs at work and get paid. That's it. No more than no more than anybody else. But when you got someone in your, you know, if you're operating a, a, a hammer drill and you got somebody in your background making all these derogatory slurs, you're you're at risk of hurting yourself. Right. Or maybe you might say, you know, I, I, I don't want to work here. Shag this. Forget it. I'm gone. Right. I mean, I know the the, the pride at work. I mean, they put up a, 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 a great resource and you probably had the same thing up as well mm-hmm. in that. Um, uh, you know, insight that, you know, my mother said, you know, a lot of times, you know, don't hire someone with a lot of jobs on their resume because, you know, they're bouncing around. I mean, to flip that, you know, maybe they might not have felt safe in their work environment. So for their own personal safety, they had to move or they were on the the butt end of jokes or they were hearing derogatory slurs made towards them. So, I mean, you don't know um, what you don't know. So, I mean, I encourage anybody to get out and regardless of how many positions did that someone has on a resume? Talk to them. Figure out their story. Learn from your own firsthand experience. I mean, you can't base everything just off a piece of paper. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So yeah. where do you think we need to go to um, in leadership in, in organizations when it comes to, I guess, creating inclusion, creating that sense of belonging that people may not feel already? Well, I think you need to... Um, you know, the queer community needs to have an equal voice at the leadership table, right? Um, you know, um, uh, you know, in larger organizations that have an executive sponsorship for any ERG group of that, I mean, it's key to drive um, to drive forward the initiatives and, and to get access to the funds, right? Um, you know, would Harvey's be doing as much as we're doing? In terms of you know pride on the pair, the pride parade, and that if if I wasn't here, I don't know, maybe maybe not. Um, and we also need people like you that uh, created a business out of this and going out. I mean, I've seen the work that you've done in in, in a lot of employers and that. So I mean, you got to start somewhere, right? But it is about education. It is about that constant, you know, beating of the drum and just keeping advancing advancing the file and that. But um, you need to have uh you know queer people in in leadership positions and that so they can go on uh forums like this talk about their lived experience and talk about you know what they felt as an employee and and what their employees are feeling now and you know speak to you know okay i'm running this business and here's here's what we're doing for the good of the queer community but here's also the business case and why it makes good business sense Right. So having lead people in those leadership positions, I think, is key. So we have 12 percent, if not more, of the community. Right. right? right. Uh, we have, um, I guess, the need for workplace policies, yep. embedding DNA, uh, looking at your culture and li- really living, breathing, diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging, anti-racism. It's a whole mouthful. Yep. Right. Into what you do as a company culture. Easy peasy. Right. Right. But you got to live it every day. You got to live it every day, yeah. <laughs> right? It's true. It's true. Yeah. So because if you don't live it every day, it's it's called out. Like we know that social media is such a thing that people are looking for. You know, if you know, like we're queer, three sixty five. You know, it doesn't change today versus yesterday versus tomorrow. Right. Um, you know, so that whole concept of progress flag or or pride flag or trans flag taking it down. Uh, you know, after you know after a celebration. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I mean every every organization. I mean, you see, you can almost watch it. You know, eleven fifty nine on the third with all the Facebook profiles. Boom, they change, change back. I mean, you know, there's there's an argument to even you know, okay, do you do you put the flag up or is the work you know is the work more meaningful than just popping the flag up for thirty days and doing nothing, right? I would think you know, uh, doing the work and like I said, having a robust organization to me that's more valuable. I I would much admire an organization if they did that versus just changing their Facebook wallpaper for thirty days and doing nothing. Right, that's my perspective on it. Right. Yeah, that's- I mean, like living it and you know putting the flag up. So I, I've said to many organizations, why not leave it up? I don't know why we take it yeah. down because 
your, you know, folks in the community you're serving, um, your staff are queer all year long, all year long. So like mm -hmm. taking it down, it's just, it's kind of a little bit performative in, in a sense. Yeah. So like, like, like leaving these things up, why not leave your, your logo up that you've changed, that you've spent a lot of money to get marketed in the progress flag colors or whatever it is that you've done. Like, why not try to embed that so that it's actually every single day of the year, right? Yeah. Same as you've done with the oil truck. You know, right. uh, Doug wanted it kept on his truck. It's still on his right. truck. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, you can yeah. still see it. It's it's not performative. So this is the conversation that a lot of people want to know is, is it performative if if I use a pride flag or progress flag. So, you know, I always say it's not performative if you're doing other actions with it, right? So, right. you know, at Harvey's, you're you're doing actions with it. And, and that's right. the whole point of, right. you know, we can celebrate, we can talk about it. We're supporters when we're mentoring or sponsoring and giving up times, participating in parades, um, mm -hmm. hosting events, you know, being a part of the community, celebrating it culturally. So, like these are right. all the things that organizations can do themselves. Right, right. And I think that's key. That is key. As opposed to, like you said, just popping it up, doing nothing, and then taking it down 30 days later. Right? Definitely. So mm -hmm. some words for you on leadership and commitment and engaging with different communities. All right, what was that? Some words from you about leadership, commitment, and engaging with historically excluded communities. Um. I mean, I think, you, you know, you, you got to network, um, you know, the more people that talk about this, um, you know, the better. I mean, the first year we did this, um, you know, we, uh, you know, we, what we were lucky enough to win award, an award with the Board of Trade. And, and, and during that acceptance speech, we, you know, we talked about um, or talked about, you know, some of the suicide rates and that of queer youth and that. So, you know, when we had that barbecue first. Um, one of our employees, uh, relatives came out at, it was, was it, was a youth, um, you know, a young adult, they came out as non-binary, right? So I don't know if it was, you know, the event itself or however it all played out, but I mean, it was two weeks afterwards and they came out as non-binary. So, I mean, to me, that's special. And, you know, for the, for the expenditure of what we paid in terms of the event and, you know, the hot dogs and all that sort of stuff and the and the performances and that. I mean, it was well worth it to to save a life. And I mean, I think that really hits home with, with business owners and leaders and that because we all have family and we all have loved ones and we want to hold them close. Um, you know, and again, I mean, the the the, the business case of it, I mean, I, I want a harmonious working environment just the same as, as anybody else. And when you don't have people issues, you don't have any issues, right? That's the ones you got to look after first. So, I mean, a harmonious working environment and and building a place where people are excited to come to work, particularly in our industry where, you know, it's, it's not sexy. We're not selling BMWs. We're selling oil. The government is not technically our friend on a lot of issues. Um, you know, so we, we want to retain the staff that we got. And I think that goes for any any business owner or leader in that, I mean, it's much cheaper to keep your team than to go out and get new people. So why not invest in them and in creating that space where they don't want to leave? Building that irresistible organization, as I say. Right. Absolutely. So yeah. any final words from you uh, to anyone that wants to, you know, learn how to do this better, wants to get started, what that looks like? Well, I think first thing they should reach out to Diversity NL. I think that's a great resource. <laughs> Thank you for the plug. shameless plug. <laughs> Little plug. I know, but seriously, it is. And, uh, you know, I mean, there's lots of resources on LinkedIn. Um, you know, of course, you know, our friends at Quadrangle um, are always there. And I'm so happy that they were able to create their first, uh, you know, the first brick and mortar space in Newfoundland devoted to this. So I'm very, very happy. I think actually Charlie was on VOCM this morning. I listened to him. So he's a great advocate in that. So, I mean, you can talk to Charlie. They talk to you. I mean, anybody that wants to talk about the business case and that and what we've done here at Harvey's, I got an open door. Come down and have a coffee. More than welcome to talk about, you know, some of the, you know, the things that we've uh, we've done here. We've had people leave the organization for more money and they've come back on their old salary just because they love the working environment. Like who does that in this day and age, right? And they're not even a member of the queer community. So, you know, very, very happy with that. And they're coming back to a home heat company that sells oil. So 
you know, I, I, you know yourself when you're running a business, um, if you're doing something right. And I think that collectively, myself, you know, the team members, the management team, everybody, our distributors, our union, we're all playing a part in uh, creating that great work environment. I'm very proud of that. Absolutely. So if folks want to reach out to you, how can they connect in? 726-1680, day or night is answered 24 hours a day, or my email is chrisforward at harveysoil.com, or you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm, there's not too many Chris Forwards around St. John's, right? But, uh, you know, we're here on 87 Water Street. Anybody's welcome to come in and, and say hi. Perfect. Thanks, Chris. It's been a pleasure. I always love hearing from you and yeah. seeing what you're doing and the fantastic work. And thank you for having me on. This was an absolute pleasure, and this is a great start to my day. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for being with us today. Comment below, subscribe, connect with me at stephanie at diversitynl.com or on LinkedIn. Be the change.